you can paint your own watercolor snow globe. And before you turn off this video, because you reckon it's gonna be too hard or you won't be able to do it, I've broken it down into simple step-by-step -step steps. <laughs> So just give me a chance to prove to you that you actually can do it so you'll be able to paint along at your own pace and create something beautiful. So I've mixed up a lovely foresty green. I'm using the supplies from my very own watercolour kit and I've got a video about mixing different greens so I'll link that for you too. Now I started off with a few little brush strokes to create the bottom of the snow globe that looks a bit like a tree but then I realised I needed to create a curve shape to show me where the globe is going to sit on top of the base. So I used the tip of my brush to create a curve just to show me where the globe would be sitting on top. And then I went back in and added more brush strokes to create the bottom of the base. So I'm painting these brush strokes really messily and I'm doing two or three layers of these brush strokes just to create the effect of a Christmas tree. I'm dabbing in some dark green while the paint is still wet to create some depth as well. And you'll notice that between the layers of the brush strokes, I've left a little bit of white space so that you can tell that there are two or three layers rather than uh, having all of the brush strokes connected you wouldn't be able to tell that there were layers because it would just be one big green kind of blob. <laughs> so I've used a little bit of white space just to allude to those layers. You'll see that it's all really, really messy. The brush strokes and the white space are really jagged and messy and uneven and blah, blah, blah. And honestly, that's how I like my paintings to be. Next up, and just keep in mind that the base of the snow globe, I couldn't remember what it was called, is still wet. Uh, next up, I painted the globe part of the snow globe in a really light gray super duper light because what we're painting is actually glass and see-through and stuff so uh, we only want it to be just barely visible and you'll see that some of the green has flowed into the gray which is actually totally fine and gives a bit of like a reflection kind of vibe and i've put in some slightly darker gray while the paint is still wet on the right hand side and also doing the same with some green on the base create a bit of shadow so it's kind of funny painting glass because it's see-through and you're like how would i even put this on the page but i've just gone for a really light gray and letting some of the colors from oh, the base of the snow globe flow into the globe part oh my god um to create our glass effect oh my goodness so then i let this first layer of painting dry completely before adding any more paint so i was working while all of that paint was still wet letting it flow and using the wet in wet technique but now we want it to dry completely before adding anything else and you'll note the set change <laughs> i left it quite a while so I'm painting a little Christmas tree inside my snow globe so that it matches the one that I actually have. You can paint anything you like in your globe. And this tree I painted using the same sort of technique as the base of the globe itself, but I worked it into a little point at the top and I've chucked in a little star and the base of the tree itself, just using the very tip of the brush for all of these things. And I've actually got a Christmas watercolors course where I go into painting Christmas trees and oh gosh, what else? Um, gingerbread people and Christmas pudding and all sorts of things and how to turn them into cards. Shameless plug. But anyway, so I go into more detail about all of those things in that course, but you can chuck whatever you like in your snow globe. I've popped a tree, obviously, to match my real actual snow globe. And then I'm using some grey again, just slightly darker than before, to create the little um, bits of snow floating around in my globe. And I also added like a teeny tiny bit more uh, shadow and depth and some red baubles too. To match my actual snow globe that I have and then I the final touch was to add some shadow so I just used some of my gray again from before and just really really lightly painted that underneath my tree and also uh, around the bottom of the globe itself and a little tiny bit up the top of the globe just to kind of match the real globe honestly I was just winging it I always get confused by shadow and depth and stuff but I just pick one side of my painting to have the shadow and just make that side darker I'm not big into anything too technical here, so I just wing it and it always turns out okay. And here are some examples of the things that we paint in my Christmas watercolour course. Um, so yeah, I was right, it was gingerbread people, puddings, Christmas trees, and also a gingerbread house. Oh my goodness. Also included a baking tutorial so you can actually cook your own gingerbread to eat while you paint because I firmly believe that painting is best enjoyed with a cup of tea and a biscuit. <laughs> so all the information is in the video description. Once you've enrolled, you'll have access all year round so you can keep using it every year, not only as a way to create some beautiful festive art, but also to relax and unwind.